and here now you can see just about how close it is. I don't want to put it too much closer than that. I don't want the lamp accidentally lowering itself to be right on top of the thing. So we'll leave this until it sets. And um, I don't see any bubbles forming. That's the one thing about what happened. Uh, <laughs> there are no more bubbles to form. There is one thing I think I want to do. I want to get the very, very last bit of this. Oh, I think I do have the very last bit of this in from the container. Okay. Then, it all looks good. Let me set this like so. There we go. All right, I'm just going to leave it now. And, uh... Let the bottom half cure. I see one little bubble forming. Doggone it, what is going on? Well, it's not going to be anything that's going to lock it, lock it together, so I'm not really too concerned with this. Oh, it's gone. All right, well, I'm happy. I don't see another one coming to the surface, which is always... A good thing uh, before you recall when the top half was molded the bubbles were rising and rising and rising it looked like almost something was boiling okay I'll keep my little t-pin handy just in case I don't see anything else Whoop! Oh, there it is again another one all right and pop that little sucker okay well if anything was going to go wrong, it had to have gone wrong on camera, of course. Put the heat down. I want this to try and set up as quickly as possible. At this point, all I can do is leave it. The silicon has been poured, and I just need to leave it to let it set. So, au reservoir. Undaunted. I press on. Okay. All right, it's the next day, the day after the mold was poured. I like to give it a lot of time to really set up, even though it has a one-hour demold. I start by pulling it away, the edges, pull the edges away from the wood. I've already done it on the top side. Now, Let's take the rubber bands off, rubber band, one in this case, and let's see if this pulls away, all right, there's one, ooh, nice, another one. The box remains intact. Huh. Yeah. I feel like Dr. Venkman from Ghostbusters. The flowers are still standing. The box remains intact. Ready for a second victim, or a third, a fourth, or a fifth. Now we start to lift. Oh, the, well, the separation line of the two molds is coming apart beautifully. These are always like opening a gift on Christmas morning. Well, see how nice the, the little corner tabs unlock? Very, very nice. Hopefully you heard that little as it unlocked. Let's get a little closer here. Here we go now. That's a good snap. When they go back together, you simply press them in and work them. Well, we'll do that when the bones are out. Another snap. Those little wood buttons, buttons make excellent, excellent locking keys. All right. Here is the air hole in the mold. 
located right here. Now there is a, there is a way to there is a way to fix this. There is a way to fix this. What uh, the way I'll fix it is really quite simple. I will put the lower skull section back into the lower mold half and open the air hole from the top and then inject a little bit of silicone, the same silicone is a wee bit left. Inject that in to the hole and allow it to set. Now comes the fun part, getting the main skull out of its container, its mold half. Simply very slowly and carefully pry the silicone mold away from the bones. Just like so. It's coming away really, really well considering what had happened. It's coming away beautifully. All right. Now I want to loosen in the eye sockets. I'm simply pressing gently, gently. I do not want to crush this. Let me get this part of the mold out of my way here. And all right, let's try and release it from the nose down, from the front of the nose area down. Aha. Just pulled it back. I, I felt it snap away. Very nice. Uh, well, snapped the piece of bone. I snapped a section of the zygomatic arch. That was a locking point. All right. I can glue that back in place. Ah, my little skull was a bit more delicate than I had it anticipated. Oh. All right, that came loose. All right, that's come completely away. I think I found the area where it was sucking in. It's at the zygomatic arch. It's in the eye sockets. It's where it's, it was locked into the and locked into the skull, which is why we have this discoloration that I pointed out in another segment. The natural bone is much more delicate than the resin casting will be. Now I'm going to push against this and push this out and away. I'm going to try not to break any more of the skull. Darn, I really don't want to do that. It's, it's locked in. In the eye sockets, it's locked in. And let's do this very gently. Try not to break anything else. The rest of the the rest of the mold under the skull looks really, really, really well made. Really, it's really beautiful, smooth, no surface bubbles. Okay, right in here. It's, is where it's locked into the skull. Right in here, this little area right here, it's locked into the skull. It got past one of those little openings. Where? At the rear of the eye socket. Even though I filled it over again with clay, 
it snuck its way in. That's why, and this, here, all right, that's why this is hung up so. All right, I need to pull forward on this eye socket and work this out. All right, that helped. I, I hope that helped it. It's coming out of the clay. It's coming out of the skull. Okay. I'm going to use my modeling tool. Work this free from the bone. There we are. All right. That's been worked free from the bone. Let's see now if this will come out of the eye socket without fracturing it. Well, what happened off camera, um, and I demolded it off camera because I had to bring it in right against my chest and there was no way that I could follow this with the camera and work it at the same time. It came out of the mold. Uh, it exploded out of the mold. And in doing so, sustained quite a bit of damage. However, that damage has revealed where the silicone leaked in. Uh, you can see in this close up here, see these shiny bits in here. See that reflection? Well, that's silicone that got in the bone. It got into the crack that was at the top of the skull. And you can see there was no way the skull was coming out in one piece at this point. There's the silicone right there. Whoops. Yeah, there's quite a bit of it. It blew apart in several, several places. Well, before reassembling the skull, it needs to be cleaned because it was a heavy coating of the wax separator. Um, this is a sound method. This is the same exact method I used for the vervet monkey skull. However, the biggest difference between these two, the cat skull and the vervet monkey, this was done with Platzil 7320. The monkey was done with Platzil 7325. Now that variance in the numbers um, is the difference and I'll explain why. The 7325 is a softer silicone than the 7320. I chose the 7320 because it had a faster setup time and the resultant cured silicone, if it had leaked into the bone, which it did, uh, would leak in and remain clear, which it has. You saw the shiny little part of silicone there. Um, it really enabled it to lock. Now, had this been a softer silicone, I would have been able to work this out without shattering the bone. Um, let me show you the damage. The top here, where I had the original, oh, here's some more silicone coming out right here. Okay. The top where the crack was, where I had filled with, um, and it was damaged in shipment. I had repaired that a while back. That's why the crack was so evident. But these little pieces of bone right here, and there's some clay. This was the clay that was put on the underside to help seal it in. But this piece goes, it's like, it's like building a puzzle. And if you do this enough times, you'll, if, uh, if you work with skulls long enough, you'll find yourself making repairs. These little pieces go back together like so. Ooh, somehow, right here. You see how these pieces go back together. 
Now this with some, we see that right there, see? After some cleaning, removing the clay and some super glue, all these parts will go back together and it will be restored. And if I do it well enough and make it clean enough, it will go back together pretty much looking the way it did when it came out of the case. I mean, this side broke almost like an eggshell. Bring it, bring it up here and you'll see. This side broke almost like an eggshell. A little piece of shell right here, a little piece of shell, a little piece of bone right here. But there's, there's silicone in there. All right. There's silicone on the inside. Now I think I'm going to leave that silicone intact because it's what's it, the silicone is what's holding this little sliver of bone in place. So I'll straighten it out and get it, get it put back to where it needs to be. Uh, then I'll simply use the silicone as a, as a guide to rest the remainder of the eye socket in place when I put it back. Goes like so. And you can see under here, that's why this needs to be, the silicone needs to be kept in place here. You see that little bone? It's actually in a little bit. I need to I need to bring that out when I glue it back together. Yes, there's damage, but it's not damage that cannot be repaired. That's the main thing. All of this can be repaired. I'll take a still of the skull and its parts this will let me know which sides go where for the repair. Now, will the resin be caught up like this, the resin casting? No. Why? Because all of the silicone that seeped into the bone has seeped into the bone. It's done. It's not going to be seeping in anywhere else. The air bubble that rose here, okay, I cut the top away, and you can see there's a channel going down into the mold. However, there's no hole on the interior portion of the mold where the hole came in, where the hole, well, where the air leaked out and the silicone leaked in. But what I will do is when I fill the hole in the base piece of the skull, I'll take a little bit and I will inject it down into the hole of the top of the mold as well, just to seal it, just to give it strength, just to keep the integrity of the mold intact. Okay, so I want to stop for now and I'm going to move on to the next step which will be producing the casting. Uh, I'm going to repair the skull first and when you see it again it will be cleaned, all the clay removed and it will be put back together. Humpty Dumpty will be repaired. It happens.